the color lookup table. It's just another one of the many tools in Darktable that you can use to modify color within an image or across a series of images. How it works, what it does, how you might use it is going to be the topic of this video. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 52 of Understanding Darktable. Like I said, we're going to look at the color lookup table module. Now, I just want to stress before we get started, as this is November of 2019, we are approaching the release of Darktable 3. I just want to make it clear, this is not the new 3D lookup table that is coming in Darktable 3. This is the color lookup table which exists in 2.6.x. Okay, when I start doing videos on Darktable 3, believe me, you will know about it. Okay, so with that said, what is a color lookup table? I have to confess, I've never used one in any of my processing work, either in my days with Darktable or in the days back when I was in the Adobe camp. Uh, just never gone there. You know, I've always used other color tools. And from what I've read about lookup tables... And I should just mention, yes, I've heard about lookup tables in video work as well, but again, I've never used them. I know that in Hollywood it's a common thing to balance all of the footage that's come from various cameras so that everything has a, a common baseline, if you will, in terms of white balance, and then apply a colour lookup table to all of that footage, regardless of what camera it was shot on, and get a consistent output that has a certain aesthetic, i.e. the matrix with its green look every time they were inside the matrix. Things like that. So I guess I've just answered the question, what exactly does a lookup table do? It's designed to allow you to impart a color palette either on an image or a series of images, or in the case of video, a series of footage, and you know end up with a consistent output. In terms of working with stills, it seems to me that there are two common uses, and I might be wrong, there might be more, maybe I'm making more out of it than there is. One is for selective recoloring, and this is something we've looked at with other color tools in Darktable in previous videos, and the other is, as previously mentioned, to come up with a certain aesthetic look in terms of color palette and apply it to a series of images. So with that in mind, I've got an image here of Tegan from one of our, actually it was the first beach shoot that I did with her a couple of years ago. And I thought, let's suppose, hypothetically speaking, we're doing a swimwear catalogue, right? And the art director has said to you, we really love this shot, love the smile, we love the square crop, that's going to work really well for the catalogue. Uh, but we do this particular top in four different colors. So we want the exact same image, but with four different color renditions to show off the four different styles of this particular top that we are going to make. And so it's your job as the photo retoucher to come up with four identical versions where the color of the top is different. So how might we do that with a color lookup table? Well, before we get to that, let's just look at all of the things that fall within the module. When you open it up, you will see a color palette of 24 different tiles. These tiles, interestingly, are a bit of an industry standard. I've pulled up the X-Rite website for their Color Checker Passport Photo 2. And if you look at the arrangement of the colors on this right-hand side, I'll rotate it around so that it makes more sense. If you look at those colors, and then you look at the color palette here in the Color Lookup Table module, they are fairly consistent, both in which colors fall where and their arrangement within that whole grid. So we've got all of these colors as a starting point, but this is just a starting point. 
If at any time you want to remove a tile from this color palette because there's more colors there than you need, you can simply right click on a tile and that will remove that tile from the color palette. Like so, right click, right click, and whatever tiles appear after that tile will all shift up one place. And we'll just reset the module. You can also add new tiles and we'll come back to that in just a moment. Next up you'll see the word patch and to the right hand side patch number zero. Now it's patch number zero because we are currently selected on the very first patch in the swatch and we can tell that this is the one we've selected because of the white square inside it. If I select another square you'll see that we are now on patch six and if I go to the red one, we're on patch 14, etc., etc. So if I remove a couple of these tiles from the swatch and I decide that I want to add a new tile, I might, for example, grab the eyedropper here and this eyedropper is linked to the color picker which appears on the left hand side. So at the moment, we are working on an area and we are working in the lab color space and the area that we're sampling is the mean or the average. I know those two things don't mean exactly the same thing, but run with me here. So if we change this to point, we end up with just the little crosshairs, which if we move into a dark area, you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Let's suppose we want to sample an area of the image. So we'll go back to area. You'll notice that this color space dropdown has the option of RGB or lab. If you are working with the color lookup table, be aware that it works in the lab color space. So it's probably a smart move to leave the color picker in the lab color space, not the RGB color space, just so you're working in the same color space and we can have mean minimum or maximum i'm just going to leave it on mean for the moment so let's suppose we wanted to sample this area of the fabric of her top so we can just left click and drag a rectangle of any size and when we release it we now have sampled an area and what we can do is come over to the color lookup table module and holding the shift key we can left click in some of the vacant space here to create a new tile which represents the color that we sampled from this box okay now the other option i'm just going to delete that so right click and it's gone the other option is i can overwrite any one of the existing tiles in the palette of tiles that are in our color lookup table. And to do that, we simply shift and left click, just like we did to create a new tile, but we do it over an existing tile to overwrite the color that was associated with that tile with the color that we have just sampled. So rather than use this blue tile because it's very close in color to the, this color here, I'll just go to this purple and again I will grab the eyedropper. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's jumping back to that color tile because that is the tile within the color lookup table that most closely matches the area that we've selected at the moment. But if I wanted to sample this area and save it where this purple tile is, it's simply shift and left click and again, we've updated the color for that particular tile. Okay, so far so good. Let's move on. Down here, we have got four sliders, a lightness slider, a green and magenta, which to my mind is erroneously labeled green and red it should be green and magenta because that is the a channel in the lab color space and a blue yellow which is the b channel in the lab color space so those are our two 
tint sliders, if you like, and then we've got a saturation slider. Below that, we've got target color, which has two options, relative and absolute. And this is another one of those oddities where that particular part of this module, the target color and relative or absolute, is absolutely not mentioned in the documentation at all. There is no reference to it being there. So my assumption is the module got updated at some point after its initial release and this target color feature was added, but the documentation never got updated to reflect that. So I really can't even tell you what that's doing. I could take a stab at it, but I don't want to go there. All right, so back to our original conundrum. Our art director has said, I need you to change the color of the top. So we go, okay, Mr. Art Director, sure. What colored tops have you got? And he says, we've got one that's lime green. And you go, right, okay. So we'll start moving this towards green. And he says, yeah, it's, it's, it's more bright and vibrant than that. And we go, okay. We maybe introduce a little bit more yellow. He goes, yeah, but it's lighter than that. So we'll go, okay, lightness. We'll lighten this up. And, and he goes, yes, that's the color we want. We go, great. The only problem is it's changed a whole lot of the image that we didn't want to change. So at this point, I would probably go and create a mask around the top so that we only affect the top. Okay, so we've made our selection and we've now got our lime green top. So the next move would be to go to our duplicate manager, create a new duplicate, and we now have our original, our green one, and our second green one. So now we say, okay, Mr. Art Director, what's the next color? And he says, it's a Ferrari red. We go, okay, great. So we'll go red, and that's pretty close already. And he goes, yeah, it's just a little bit darker than that. So we go, okay, make it a little bit darker, a little bit darker. He goes, yep, that's about right. We go, great, create another duplicate. Okay, so you get the idea. This is just one particular interpretation, and it might not be an accurate interpretation, but it's one use that I can imagine for a color lookup table. If at any time you have modified the colors for a particular tile and you suddenly think, nah, this is just all gone pear-shaped, I need to reset that particular tile back to its default, you can simply double click on the tile and it gets reset to its original values. Okay, so that's one approach. The other approach that I imagine is creating a particular aesthetic look for an image and then applying it to a sequence of images for a consistent output. And for that, I've got three images from my shoot with Tammy in the vineyards a year or two back. And if we have a look at these three images, what I've done with the history stack is simply reverted right back to the original state and then applied a white balance so that all three images uh, as close to a, a common baseline as we can get. Okay, so with that in mind, what we could do is randomly pick some of these tiles and make some modifications, and then we'll create a preset, basically. So, this brown, that's probably going to affect all of this dirt here. Maybe I want to make that a little darker. So I'll just make it a little darker. Uh, let's suppose the art director says to us, she's a little bit pale. Can we give her a bit of a suntan? We go, yeah, no worries. We can grab our eyedropper, sample some skin. It tells us that this patch here is the closest to, to her skin tone at the moment. So we'll just slide the lightness down just a little bit, not that much. Maybe up to about there. That's great. We might go the vines in the background. 
we want to lighten them up, but also saturate them a little bit. So we'll put them towards green a little bit and we're just going to lighten them up a touch and we might do the same thing with the yellows just to lighten those vines up a little bit maybe the blue of the car let's darken the car shall we so wow yeah that's intense maybe desaturate it a little and let's change the color Make it a bit greenish. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? A dark green car in a green vineyard. Why not? That makes sense. And maybe the sky. We might just do something with the sky. Yeah, introduce a bit of purple. There we go. Okay, so maybe that was the look that we were going for for our whole sequence of images. We could save this as a preset you can see I've been mucking around. I had an F52 preset. I'm just going to update that preset. So that is now my color lookup table preset for the whole sequence of images. So now I can go to my next image and simply go F52 and I've got all of the same modifications to all of those color zones I shouldn't call them color zones because I don't want to confuse it with the color zones module, but to all of those areas of the frequency spectrum to the same degree on this image. And then we can do the same with the third image. Go to the preset and there we are. Now, like I said, I have never used a color lookup table before. There may be other ways to use it. There may be more accurate ways to use it. If you've had experience with it, please sing out in the comments down below. Something else that I noticed is that in the documentation, it says that you can have a color lookup table with more than 24 tiles within it. But what I have not been able to work out is how you can create a 25th tile because there is no blank space in which to shift click to create that 25th tile. You've only got these 24 and that's it. Now, I am under the belief that you can download lookup tables from the web. However... The documentation is again a little bit sparse in that it does not tell you where to save those lookup tables or how to import them so that the color lookup table module will see them. So again, if you've had experience in that, please sing out in the comments down below so that everyone else understands. The documentation also mentions that if you have a color lookup table with more than 24 tiles in it, the module color swatch will appear as a 7x7 seven seven grid. But like I said, I haven't worked out how you can create a 25th tile on your own. It might be that you have to import another lookup table that already has more than 24 tiles in it so that you can then remove some tiles and have some grey space in which to create new tiles if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that all of these color tiles represent a certain part of the color spectrum. And in that sense, they kind of remind me of the color zones module. So just quickly, if we jump back to the color zones module, if you haven't watched that video, I will throw a link to it somewhere up there. This has these nodes down the bottom of the graph, which again affect a certain portion of the color spectrum. And we control how much of the spectrum they influence with our mouse wheel. We can make it a smaller circle of influence or a larger circle of influence simply by rolling our mouse wheel backwards and forwards. And if you wanted to have one of these nodes work on a larger part of the spectrum, we could simply move some of these nodes away so that one of these nodes sits out in a much 
wider area by itself and we can then make that circle all the bigger to create a control point which affects a much wider part of the color spectrum. The color lookup table is kind of going in the opposite direction. Instead of just eight control nodes across the frequency spectrum, we've now got 24 or maybe 18 for the color and six for the lightness. So yeah, there's kind of a correlation there that I'm sure somebody could sing out and provide more uh, information on how, how those two things are correlated. Anyway, I am going to leave it there because that's pretty much as much as I've worked out from reading the documentation. Like I said, there's a couple of holes there. It sort of comes up wanting. But hopefully that's given you an idea of how you might use a color lookup table module. Before I go, I do want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters once again, particularly two of them who have joined in the last couple of weeks at Tier 4, Sly and Knut. Thank you so much, guys. You have no idea how much that support means to me. Thank you. All right, I will leave it there, and I will see you in the next one.